Dad gummit blowout. Hi everybody and welcome back to Plastic Models by Regular Dude. Part number five of the Dragon 135th scale Jagdtiger. So as you can see here, I have an idler that is off of the vehicle. So here's why. I blew it whenever I put this thing together in that I glued the idler adjuster here I glued it into place and I shouldn't have done that there's a couple reasons why number one um, well the main reason why is can't adjust the track tension and the problem with these type of tracks is it's not like a regular like most tracks where you just have you know a link connecting to another link. You have the link and then this connector part here with these little extra bits. So instead of having this much of adjustment room or wiggle room, whatever you want to call it, it's much longer. So if the idler is um, not positioned properly, <clears throat> excuse me, properly, e either you're going to have way too much sag in your track or there won't even be enough track to connect the ends together and that's what I ran into so that is why I had to cut these off because I'm gonna have to reposition them so like here is the track kit or the kit tracks um, and what I'm gonna have to do is put this in position here And then put everything in place once you know I get this painted. For the other side, I have the T-Rex tracks, which won't be as big a deal, but I'll still have to position the idler. So what I did using this saw is I sawed this thing off. Now, there, fortunately, the way this thing is made, where it cut off right here flush with this part um, this was a hollow tube here the part that goes into the kit so that's gonna really give me a chance to uh, save the day so to speak so I cut this little piece of styrene here um, sprue and I can glue that into place and basically what I've done is I've created myself an adjustable idler so I really lucked out I thought I was just gonna have to glue this flat on there and hope it stayed so that's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna get this glued in here and then I will um, move on with painting the tracks doing some weathering doing some uh, metal work on these wheels here and uh, get ready to get that underneath part done so I can move on to paint and weathering and stuff like that on the upper surfaces. All right, so I've got both sides done. And uh, as you can see, that'll fit right on there. And we have some adjustment stoked. So now with that done um, and a base coat of paint on the tracks using MRP extra dark rust I'm ready to start doing some weathering underneath here and I'm gonna keep it pretty simple up underneath here because it's not gonna be that visible but I do want to do something so I think what I will probably do here is uh, What I'm gonna do is use I'm going to use this uh, for underneath here. I think I'm gonna use this MIG pigment dark earth mixed with some pigment binder, which makes kind of a muddy stuff. I'm not gonna put it on very thick, but I do want to get some texture going on underneath there. Not that it's going to be real visible, but that's the plan. So, um, let me get some of that mixed up. 
All right, while that stuff is drying, the next thing I want to do is start doing some metal, some burnished metal, i.e. the rims of the um, road wheels, the teeth on the drive sprockets, obviously the uh, metal or the um, contact parts of the idlers and the tracks where the road wheels run. So for that I'm going to use a graphite pencil and all I do is this so I'm going to work on that And then hopefully by the time I get done with this, the uh, mud will be dry enough that I can put on, start working with some dry pigments. All right, the next thing I did was using some light sienna uh, pigments. Kind of stippled that on there just to kind of dull down that harsh dark and there's enough uh, of the dark showing through that gives it a little bit more depth, a little bit more texture without it being too crazy. So got that side done. I'll do the other side and then I can start putting the tracks on. All right, so here's what's gone on since uh, my last little segment there. I kind of forgot to video anything, but I got the tracks installed and the fenders. So let's talk about the tracks really quick. So this side here is the um, kit tracks. And this side here is the T-Rex tracks. So a friend of mine, Keith, the guy who actually gave me this kit, he asked me what I thought about the, uh, the tracks and how I like them in comparison to each other. And my response was, if I had it to do over again, knowing what I, knowing what I know now, I would probably have just used the kit tracks. And here's the reason why. Number one, you can't really see up in here where the, the sag is. So, you know, one of the benefits of uh, individual track links workable tracks is the fact that you can get a realistic sag and they and they do that they work great but you can't really see it compared to that and that and um the uh kit tracks one of the drawbacks of kit tracks <clears throat> in this case magic tracks for dragon is you have those uh, ejector pin marks on the inner part of the track link and those can be a real pain to clean up but as far as the amount of work it takes to do the t-rex compared to the kit tracks there's no time savings either way because cleaning off the ejector pin marks which are proud of the surface as opposed to recess it's super <clears throat> excuse me super easy so that's my thoughts on the tracks um i like them both but you know I could have saved myself a little bit of money and uh, just went with the kid tracks. So there is that. And then the uh, fenders, they went on okay. Had a little bit of, they didn't fit exactly perfect on the front. Um, and I don't know if it's, I misaligned something somewhere. It's no big deal. I'm not really concerned about it. There's a little bit of a step here, which I could possibly get rid of partially by uh, gluing it and clamping it, which I may do. But anyway, 
there's where we are. So with that, all I need to do is glue the barrel in. And once I do that, I can get this thing primed and start painting this thing because the, uh, the construction's done. Now, one thing I will note, <laughs> it may not be obvious until I make my, take my final photos and some people may not catch it, but I only did, um, six spare tracks. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put four on this side and only two on this side. And what I did is when I weathered the tracks, I left these two right here, which would have been these two here, uh, unweathered. Now I'll add a little bit of dust, but the rest of it's going to be credited up a lot more. So hopefully you'll be able to see a little bit of a differentiation. Uh, and it might be, you know, to those that pay attention, it might be somewhat obvious that uh, the um, tracks, those two track links were replaced. Some people may not even notice it or would not have noticed it if I hadn't said something. But there's that. So I think, uh, yeah, that's the end of the construction. All I got to do is glue that barrel in. So I think I'm going to end this video right here. So ends part five of the Dragon 135th scale Yagtier Porsche production type. So next time when I come back, I will do the primer and start painting this thing and then maybe get into weathering on the same video, but we'll see. So anyway, as always, thanks for watching Plastic Models by a Regular Dude. And if you enjoyed this, maybe hit the subscribe button if you haven't. If you want to watch uh, more of this build or some of my other builds, um, stay tuned. So until next time, thanks for watching, and I will see you all later.